Chapter 1. Uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. Most companies often assume that a staff member who excels in their current position should get promoted to a managerial role as a reward for their success. But, unfortunately, the best individual contributor in a company may also be a woeful manager because both roles demand entirely different sets of skills. While an individual contributor may be task-oriented and self-reliant, a manager must be people-oriented and rely on others. Management is an art more than a science because every managerial role is unique. Yet, many employees accept management promotions because the company may not give them any other opportunity to grow if they reject the managerial role. Therefore, companies should offer management training to potential managers to help them decide whether they are suited for the role or not. They must also assure these prospective managers that if they choose not to accept the position, it will not affect other promotion opportunities that open up outside management. Some managers have an omnipotent mindset. They delegate minor tasks and take on all major duties themselves. Effective managers are those who learn to have faith in the abilities of their staff members. A good manager is a good teacher. You know how to teach people how to do things right and trust them to do it. A failure to delegate major tasks will eventually create a high staff turnover issue. Staff members will feel frustrated that they are not given any major responsibility. Consequently, the manager will spend more money and time trying to replace staff members. Leadership qualities, not technical knowledge, are to be considered when choosing a person for a managerial role. This summary highlights the areas of change as you transition from being an individual contributor to being a first-time manager. You will discover the qualities you need to imbib so that you can succeed in your new role. You will learn to know and trust the people you work with, appreciate them for the work they do, and pay attention to them. You will also find a list of roles you are expected to fill as a manager and set guidelines that describe how to fill these roles effectively without putting undue stress on yourself. Chapter 2. A new manager does not make immediate changes and seldom draws on their authority. The prospect of being a manager can be an exciting one, but you must remember that getting the support you need will not be automatic. You may face obstacles that some of your old colleagues who feel they were better suited for the role put in your way. A common test you may face is the tendency to compare you to the previous manager. Some may adopt the wait-and-see approach, while others may become yes people just to win you over. It is vital that you're a student of human behavior and able to discern these different categories without showing animosity toward anyone. Exercise patience. Avoid making abrupt changes to the status quo as much as possible. Making changes immediately may be misconstrued as arrogance and disrespectful to your predecessor. Have the courage to admit your ignorance if you want to earn the trust of your team. When someone asks you a question you don't know the answer to, resist the temptation to fabricate one. Pay more attention to your direct reports than you do your upward communication. Your subordinates will have more say on your future in the company than its president. You need their cooperation because you will be judged by how well your team functions. When you give an order, present it as a request as often as possible. That way, you will not use too much, too much authority in a situation that doesn't demand it. Reserve your authority for emergencies to build a positive image with your team. Chapter 3. Early into your managerial role, open lines of communication and make your team feel comfortable talking to you. Ask to have a conversation with your team in a relaxed atmosphere. Listen to them and make the first meeting about opening communication lines rather than outward communication. It needs to be an in-person conversation, not a phone or mail one. Ask questions that will get them to talk. Show genuine interest in what they have to say. If you can help employees achieve their goals, they'll be more productive. It is even more important that they see that they're making progress toward their goals. Jim McCormick Most managerial problems are people problems rather than technical ones. By engaging the small issues, you'll find that the large ones may not surface. Combining your managerial role with old friendships may be tricky. The thing to note is that you should not treat your old colleagues, who now have to report to you, better or worse than others in the department. Hold everyone in your department to the same standards of performance, behavior, and accountability. Structure your crew to allow only the number of direct reports you can meet once a week. Make these meetings one-on-one. -on -one. That means that a good number of direct reports you can have is five if you meet one per day. Allowing anyone to report to you directly may wear you down eventually. However, designing these weekly meetings will allow for thoughtful decision-making and train your subordinates to resolve many issues themselves instead of having ad hoc contacts with you every time. When you're in a mood that distracts you from work, be upfront about it when you're interacting with a team member. You don't want them to think they are the cause of your agitation or distant behavior. Showing dramatic mood swings makes you less effective as a manager. Your subordinates will avoid contact with you until you appear to be in a good mood. Do not disguise your feelings, as this may make people not identify with you. Enjoy the company of your subordinates and respect their feelings. That way, you earn their respect for your feelings as well. Chapter 4. Cultivate trusting relationships with your subordinates to be a successful manager. Involve your employees in the decision-making process instead of being a dictatorial manager. Many of them are closer to the situation than you and are better placed to offer insights. In addition, people will commit to an idea if they feel a sense of ownership of it. 
Build their confidence by assigning them tasks at which they can succeed. When an employee fails, deliver your criticism privately while you publicly praise them for their success, depending on the dynamics of the team. Correct the misunderstanding that led to the error instead of passing personal judgment that will make your employee feel inadequate. When you praise an employee publicly, do it in a way that does not make them an object of resentment and jealousy. Positive feedback is a morale booster. Show appreciation and be comfortable giving praise. A guide that helps is be specific with your positive feedback to reinforce positive behavior. Describe how their behavior fits into the bigger picture. Let the feedback be commensurate with the contribution made. Describe the behavior that you appreciate and explain why it is commendable. Then, show them how that action impacts the business. Other ways of building trust include sharing the vision of the organization and the department with your team members. Give clear directions. Share your successes and failures. Ask your team members about their expectations from the job. Chapter 5. An active listening skill is an invaluable tool in a manager's toolbox. A good manager must be an active listener. You're listening actively when you let the other person know they have been heard. People feel heard when you involve yourself in the conversation. Clarify parts that are unclear to you, summarize what you've heard, and give appropriate verbal and nonverbal cues. In both professional and personal life, people enjoy being around someone who shows genuine interest in them. Listen twice as much as you speak. Listening keeps you from being seen as a know-it-all manager. It also helps you gain insights and information you would miss if you talked more than you listened. If you want to be thought of as a brilliant manager, be an active listener. Jim McCormick Listening helps you learn more than speaking. By listening, you show respect for other people's ideas, experiences, and opinions. One reason people find it difficult to listen is because of the comprehension gap. A comprehension gap is the gap between average speaking speed and average comprehension speed. It is known that while the average speaking speed is 100 words per minute, the average comprehension speed is 1,000 words per minute. Therefore, people tune out of the conversation when the person talking is at least 900 words per minute slower than what they can comprehend. Active listeners have solved the problem created by the comprehension gap. They encourage people to talk, continue the other person's line of communication when they speak, and use certain cues to indicate their genuine interest in the subject matter. Here are a few ways to practice active listening. Keep eye contact. Occasionally nod your head to affirm your understanding. Smile while you nod. Make a well-placed comment like, that's interesting, tell me more. Respectfully interrupt the conversation to make a note of your thoughts when you are tempted to reply. Then refocus. Restating what you believe you've heard is the height of active listening. Restating what has been said shows that you have been listening, and it helps to clear any misunderstandings of what has been said. Active listeners combine words, facial expressions, and tone of voice to show the value they place on what is being said. Did you know, most people speak between 80 and 120 words per minute. Chapter 6. A good manager assumes many roles, like an actor does in different movies. You can be a coach, standard setter, performance appraiser, teacher, motivator, visionary, and any other role that helps to achieve success for your team. However, you must watch out for the mistakes that managers often make. The most common is the desire to tell others what to do, how to do it, and making sure they do it. A good manager drives their team to become self-directive. Your team members will support you and commit to the common cause if you share power with them and remove obstacles that may hinder the likelihood of success. Whatever role you assume as a manager, there are eight responsibilities you are to perform. They are hiring, communicating, planning, organizing, training, monitoring, evaluating, firing. A good manager shows genuine concern for the welfare of people on their team without appearing weak. Genuine concern means your staff members are truly challenged, recognized, rewarded for good performance, and given accurate feedback in a timely manner. Some common pitfalls to avoid as a manager include the tendency to make your old job an occupational hobby because it is similar to you. The unwillingness to roll up your sleeves when the situation demands it. Delegating responsibility without giving the authority to be successful. A good manager must combine big-picture thinking with a detail-oriented mindset. Balance is vital. Paying attention to details makes you sensitive to the effort required to complete the task. And big-picture thinking helps you keep the overall objective in mind. Chapter 7. A healthy relationship with your superiors and subordinates will enhance your future success as a manager. Now that you're a member of the management team, you need to be loyal to your superiors, provided their purpose is honorable and serves the good of humanity. When your superiors make a decision that negatively affects your department and demand your support, you can ask for the reasoning behind it. If they are unwilling to share, you may have to find a way to fill the void without appearing to be disloyal. To build a good relationship with your superiors, keep them informed of your plans for your department, set up meetings with them at their convenience, prepare for those meetings and be articulate in your presentation, and actively listen to your superiors' inputs. If you have to deal with an unreasonable manager, you may need to explain to them in a diplomatic and professional manner how their behavior affects the bottom line. Be the kind of leader you wish you had if you hope to keep good people from leaving the company. There are four major manager personality types. Most managers fall into at least one of these categories, while some combine styles. These styles are 
The monopolizers, who like to be in charge of everything and want everyone to do what they say. The methodicals, who like to gather data before making decisions. The motivators, who talk more than they do. The mixers, who prefer the status quo and are more concerned about how people are than the delivery of the job descriptions. If your manager is a monopolizer, you need to be ready to state the facts. If you deal with a methodical manager, be ready to support your position. If you work for a motivator, be ready for small talk. If they are mixers, be prepared to be a team player. It is also helpful to know how your manager processes information, the level of detailing they expect, the topics they are most and least interested in, and the urgency with which they want new information. Chapter 8. Use appropriate disciplinary strategy to deal with employee problems. Your direct reports and employees are not perfect people, and when they present problems that affect the smooth running of your department, you need to handle the issues effectively. Sometimes you may need to seek outside help to defuse a situation. A good manager does not tolerate bad behavior. However, when you have to correct bad behavior, be careful not to make it personal. Correct the behavior privately and make sure you allow the employee concerned time to talk. You may need to take stringent actions such as placing the employees on probation or not giving them a bonus or salary raise as a punishment for bad behavior. Traditionally, there had been two management styles, autocratic and diplomatic. People working for an autocrat believe they are working for someone, while those reporting to a diplomat believe they are working with someone. Jim McCormick In modern times, managers have realized the need for a third approach, the awareness approach. A manager is aware if they combine control and encouragement appropriately for each employee. Encouragement is in use when you motivate, listen, and run interference when necessary so that employees perform the needed tasks. Different employees need a combination of control and encouragement of varying degrees, depending on what they are working on and the dynamics of the department. The five types of employees that need different combinations of control and encouragement are Type A employee is already motivated but lacks skill. You need to exercise control. Type B employee is skillful but not motivated. You need to encourage them. Type C employee combines motivation and skill effortlessly. You need only to provide little control and encouragement. Type D lacks both skill and motivation. You need to engage at a high level of control and encouragement. Type E has an average level of skill and motivation. You need to match that level in terms of control and encouragement. The situation determines the managerial style to apply. For example, you may need to be more direct when there is a deadline emergency and no mistakes are acceptable. You may need to apply a consensus strategy when your department is considering a new project. And you need everyone to buy in. Chapter 9. Good managers are aware of their responsibilities and carry them out effectively. An important part of a manager's job is hiring new staff and firing old ones. While most people look for experience, education, and qualifications, good managers watch for the right attitude. The most qualified person with a bad attitude will be a waste of time and money to the company. During interviews, your job as a manager is to make the prospective employee feel relaxed and reserve any tricky questions for later in the interview. You may need someone else present to give you a different perspective on the person. When you successfully hire the right person, pay close attention to their training to see that it is adequately and properly paced. Too much too soon and your new employee may feel inundated. Hiring is the good part. Firing is arguably the hardest managerial role. However, when an employee begins to cause problems, firing should not be the first point of call. When all other avenues have been exhausted, guidance, training, encouragement, and there seems to be no headway, firing becomes inevitable. Before issuing the firing notice, ensure all firing guidelines and necessary documentation has been done. Do not allow your emotions to distract you from paying attention to all necessary details. Also, late Friday afternoon may be the most suitable time to disclose the news to the employee concerned. By then, not many people will be around to see what's happening. Chapter 10. Proper navigation of office politics will help you relieve undue stress and live a balanced life as a manager. As a manager, it is important to have a mentee who can take over from you or take charge while you are away. Make yourself dispensable. Keep developing yourself and challenge your employees to keep learning as well. Complacency is dangerous. Set an example of proper dressing. How you dress will send an indirect message to your team to follow your example. Ensure that each person prioritizes important work over urgent work if you want to move your organization forward. Learn to delegate tasks rather than trying to take them on yourself. Delegation helps you focus on other important aspects, such as big-picture thinking, which is vital to move the organization in the path of progress. When you face stressful situations, it is vital that you keep yourself from acting impulsively. Instead, relax and take a deep breath before you tackle the situation. React to the problem, not the stress. To succeed, you must convert the fear of a stressful situation into the challenge of a stressful situation. Jim McCormick Plan your attack. Delegate aspects of the task that need delegation. Do not be afraid to ask for advice when you need it. Do not make your professional career an obsession or a means to escape your personal life. 
Spend time with family and friends. Have a hobby outside work. If you have to work remotely, ensure you are able to draw the line between work and leisure. Conclusion Your success or failure as a manager depends primarily on your attitude, the perspective you take to the problems that come with the position, and how you see yourself. You must be the type of person that understands that you have control over your thoughts and how you think. When you control your mind, your feelings will follow in that direction. We live in a broken world where a person might do everything right and still not get the results they seek. However, it is better to do the right thing than to ignore the basic truths shared in this summary. Your chances of success increase when you commit to doing the right things. Growth is vital. Beyond being a better manager, you need to be a better person. Ensure you're a square peg in a square hole. Love what you do and do what you love. There may be aspects of your job you don't like, but if they outnumber the ones you do, it may be expedient to consider a career change. Your focus should be on the impact you're making on the people you come in contact with, irrespective of the industry in which you operate. Do not be distracted by your titles. Seek significance. An executive or a manager is a combination of leader and servant. You must find a balance between authority and responsibility to serve. There's a great deal to be gained from developing empathy for your employees' attitudes and feelings. Try this. Being a great manager requires that you are neither autocratic or diplomatic, but an aware leader. Awareness means you combine control and encouragement seamlessly. To do this, you need to know the type of employees in your department or organization. Create a table with columns labeled type A, B, C, D, and E, as illustrated in Chapter 6. Write the names of your employees based on how they fit the description of each type described in this summary. Assess your people to know the right combination of control and encouragement you need to apply to them.